We begin tonight with the resolute stand of the Nigeria Labour Congress that there's no going back on Labour's demand for a new minimum wage of 30,000 Naira. The president of the NLC, Ayuba Waba, at a Labour-related function in Adokiti, the state capital, told journalists that state governors have no justification to decline paying the wage as they were part of the decision-making pro progress. Now, they warned that any governor under any political party who refuses to pay the proposed wage stands the risk of revolt through the ballot. Let not the few try to divert our attention. Our attention will not be diverted. Will NLC remain very committed and resolute in pursuing this legitimate demand, which is due since 2016, and therefore will put every machinery in place to engage every any governor that will want to use the avenue of either disengagement or the avenue of uh, lack of ability to pay to address the issue. We have said there is resources. If we are able to reduce the high cost of governance, including the homongos security vote, including paying a lot of aids, then we'll have a lot of money to actually pay the workers. We cannot succumb. We cannot be intimidated. Workers should be resolute. And I have said clearly, any governor that will not pay, let him go back to his state and say that he cannot be able to pay and the workers will not vote for him. We have also told the workers, any governor that will not pay the minimum wage, let them not give them any support. Let the workers, their family and pensioners also put up a resistance which will provide platform and leadership to make sure that that happens. To security matters, the Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi II, has been speaking on the factors fueling violent extremism in the northern part of the country, blaming it on poverty and inequality, among other factors. The former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, who made this position known at a conference to address the issue of insurgency in the north, said something must be done urgently to address the situation. With globalization, we have had an intensification of the processes of marginalization horizontally and vertically. The world has been divided into rich and poor by region. The richer parts of the world in the last 30, 40 years have gone extremely rich, whereas places like sub-Saharan Africa have had an increase in the absolute number of poor people. Within sub-Saharan Africa, we find huge inequalities regionally and huge inequalities vertically. If you take Nigeria and you take the multidimensional poverty index that was published by the Oxford Human Development Institute in 2015, the incidence of poverty in Lagos State is 8%. But the incidence of poverty in Zamfara State is 91%. In Yobe, it is 90%. We cannot divorce these horizontal inequalities from some of the tendencies. Why, why is there so much violence in the north? Why don't you find this violence in the south? There has to be some correlation between economic marginalization and political and social stability. So poverty is in fact a major factor. Plus within societies, Within countries, we have huge inequalities. And staying with security matters, some religious and traditional leaders have been discussing ways to finally put an end to Boko Haram insurgency in the country's northeast. The leaders who are meeting in Kano are even more concerned about the increasing population of the group, and they believe proper education remains one of the ways to curb the spread to states around the Lake Chad region. Our correspondent Idris Jibrin reports. And welcome to IDH Conference 2018. Religious leaders, traditional title holders, government officials, civil society organizations, and international partners are meeting at the Kano State Government House. They are here in search of a coming action to end Boko Haram insurgency in northern Nigeria, which has spilled into countries around the Lake Chad region. From 2009 to date, a series of attacks by these insurgent groups led to the death of thousands of innocent civilians. 
It destroyed property worth billions of naira, and above all, it created a climate of fear and psychological trauma in the minds of Nigerian people. Host Governor Abdullahi Ganduji told the conference that over the last three years, Kano State in the northwest Nigeria has recorded devastating attacks. The Boko Haram insurgency reared its ugly head in 20. Two, in 2002, but started using violence as a means of sending their powerful message in 2009, terrorizing Nigeria and Nigerians, especially in the northeast, north central, and northwest, including our dear state come. Although the federal government claims there has been a remarkable improvement within the last three years of Buhari administration, a more holistic approach may be required to stop the Minas. The present administration is determined to end the insurgency and eliminate the acute suffering of the victims. The conference identified and honored some prominent members of the society over their efforts to create awareness for their people on the need to distance themselves on any act that may be considered a threat to national security. Idris Jibrin, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has given religious leaders in the country the assurance that he is on course to achieving his vision and objectives for Nigeria. The president was speaking when he received members of the Christian Association of Nigeria, led by its president, Reverend Dr. Samson Ayokunle, at the State House in Abuja. He told the clerics that he is doing his best to fulfill his electoral promises of securing the country, fighting corruption, and resuscitating the economy. According to the president, quote, it's on record that some cases initiated by the anti-graft bodies since 2003 are yet to be concluded. We will, however, not be discouraged. Where monies have been recovered, such monies will not find their way back to the looters, as I have directed the EFCC to account for every money it's recovered and put them in a dedicated account, end of quote. On the farmers and herders clashes, President Buhari told the visitors that the government is working towards finding a lasting solution to it. President Buhari, who also met with Islamic leaders from the 36 states of the Federation at the State House, gave them the assurance of his commitment to laying the foundation of free, fair and credible elections in Nigeria. According to the President, what I want to assure Nigerians is that I'll continue to pressure the police and other agencies to do their best to ensure a conducive atmosphere for free and fair elections. President Buhari pointed out that a number of measures put in place have seen the gradual improvement of elections, as witnessed in Edo, Anambra, Ikiti and Oshun states, from what he describes as dismal and unacceptable levels witnessed in rivers and Kogi states. And at another meeting hosted by the President, the federal government has approved the sum of 60 billion naira to support the rice industry and crash the price of rice ahead of the festive period. The Minister of Agriculture, Adwogbe, revealed this after a meeting with the President at the National Food Security Council at the Presidential Villa. The Council also announced a decline in foreign exchange expenditure on food items from $1.4 billion in 2013 to about $628 million in 2018. Our State House correspondent Gloria Umezoke reports. Yeah. President Muhammadu Buhari arrives to chair the National Food Security Council at the State House, attended by governors and members of the Federal Executive Council. After the meeting, which held behind closed doors, the Minister of Agriculture tells correspondents of billions of naira worth of support from the federal government towards the rice industry. The government has approved some money to support the rice uh, industry to bring down prices. But we're going to handle it differently. We don't want to get into the petroleum subsidy uh, problem. So a committee is looking at it with the Ministry of Finance options. Uh, we think that it's better for us to lend money to the millers, the farmers, and the distributors at a very low interest rate so that the capital doesn't disappear. We are not going to start giving, uh, you, if you sell one bag, we'll give you so much per bag, because we know that will result in a lot of uh, uh, confusion. Uh, it will be impossible to monitor 
and we don't want to get into any scandals about uh, rice subsidy. On the herders and farmers clash, the agriculture minister reveals plans to tackle the crisis. We are putting in place a program now to see if we can aggregate the, all the waste from harvest, maize stocks and sorghum stocks and millet, rice stocks, uh, beans and so on, and process them, add molasses and feed the cows instead of letting them roam around and get into these conflicts with the farmers. The, report the Kebi state governor the also reacts to reports by the U.S. Department for Agriculture, suggesting that Nigeria imports 3 million tons of rice. First, the early official importation in Nigeria is about 4,000 metric tons of rice. The U.S. authorities responded by saying that their assessment was based on satellite imaging of plotted areas, but certainly uh, that is an erroneous uh, picture, but because even in spite of the plotting, the upland rice production has been quite strong this year. Even though Nigeria boasts of being the world's largest producer of yam, the challenge of adulteration and poisonous preservation of food in the markets is one the federal government vows to thoroughly address. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. There's been a small reprieve for the former governor of Plateau State, Mr. Joshua Darie, and his Taraba State counterpart, Jolly Nyame, after the Court of Appeal reduced the maximum jail term of 14 years handed to them. Mr. Darie got a reduced sentence of 10 years, while Reverend Nyame got 12. The court has also ordered Reverend Nyame to pay a fine of 495 billion naira. Our judiciary correspondent reports. Five months after they began a 14 year sentence for criminal breach of trust and embezzlement, former Governor of Plateau State, Senator Joshua Darie, and a former Governor of Taraba State, Reverend Jolly Nyame, approached the appeal court seeking for a vacation of their convictions. In the case of Senator Darie, the appeal court led by Justice Stephen Adder held that the lower court erred when it handed down the maximum sentence of 14 years to the former governor as he is a first-time offender. The uh, courts had decided the uh, appeal was allowed in part, uh, not uh, totally in favour of the appellant and not totally in favour of the respondent. Uh, where we will uh, have to uh, return back to the appellant and to brief him and uh, take it up from there. On the other hand, the panel led by Justice Emmanuel Agim considered the appeal filed by former Taraba State Governor Reverend Joli Nyame. Aside from reducing the sentence, the court ordered him to pay a fine of 495 million naira for criminally embezzling funds meant for the state while in office. The justices based their judgment on the defendant being a first-time offender as well, but the court insists that he should pay a fine based on the provisions of Section 315 of the Criminal Code Act. We are satisfied with the judgment. It was a very sound judgment. It is um, throwing more light on the fight against corruption. So that is what this judgment does. Uh, it's a landmark decision that affects um, the fight against corruption positively, and, and we are happy with that. Well, you know, the judgment was not read in full. He only summarized it until the full reasons are read then we may not be able to comment competently. So I'll rather wait until I have the full judgment, read it carefully, reflect properly, consult authorities, and then before I will know whether... I mean, for example, the, the question of fine, I was hearing of it for the first time today. Throughout the arguments, it never came up. Former Governor Joshua Darie was convicted for misappropriating 1.2 billion naira ecological fund belonging to Plato State while he was in office, while Reverend Jolly Nyame is majorly accused of diverting 180 million naira out of the 250 million naira meant for the purchase of stationaries by the Tereba State Government between January and February 2005. Amaka Okafo, Channels Television News. 
In part two of the break, an assessment of the humanitarian crisis in the Northeast will be joined by the Director of Programs, Victim Support Fund, Professor Nana Tanko. That's in a moment. Do join us again.